Welcome. Today we're going to take a quick look at Joplin Notes. Uh, just as another note-taking application. This won't be a deep dive. I'm not going to cover every feature in it. I'm sure I'm going to miss lots of stuff. If you're a Joplin fan, sorry. That's it. And I'm only going to look at it on my iPad because that's where I do most of my work. I'm not even going to look at the desktop at all. Buckle up. Let's start on the Joplin app site. Joplin app is available for care, pretty much everything, right? You can see here we've got Windows 3264, Mac OS, Linux. This is, you know, it's kind of an open source software, so Linux, uh, Google Play, and the App Store. One of the interesting things is you can see right here it has a terminal operating system application. So if we go back up to the screenshots, I'm not actually going to install this because I'm on my iPad. But you can see in the background right here, there's like a cool terminal application. So if you function in terminal all day, which funny enough, I do. Um, I'm a big Vim person. So in theory, I could actually install Joplin on like the servers I'm working on and have my note system on those servers and synced all over, which would be interesting. Um, I know I watched a couple videos on this and Joplin actually installs two applications when it installs on Linux, at least. Uh, I'm not sure about Mac or Windows, but it actually installs the Joplin desktop and the Joplin um, terminal application, which is interesting. Before we actually look at the application, let's look at a few other things. Um, as far as getting content into it, it has a web clipper. So you can see it here. It is only available on desktop. It is only available in Chrome and Firefox. So I have Joplin installed, right? Joplin, you can see it right there. But if I go up to my share sheet, it also notes that I don't have Joplin. I can't send anything to it, which sucks because I just can't do anything with it. Right, even if I go up to more, I went through this yesterday. I got no Joplin here, which sucks. It's actually one of the things that means like I can't even really begin to look at it on iPad because there's no way to send data into it. And now importing and exporting. So this imports from Evernote. It will import from Markdown files. And it does some other importing from, say, Tomboy Notes, which is another Linux-y like, open source uh, application. Uh, OneNote, Microsoft, um, actually says first import the notes from OneNote into Evernote, then export the stuff. I wonder if you'd have to have a paying Evernote account then because there's some features that wouldn't be supported. I don't know, I'd have to check. But that's at least something to think of. Uh, if you're gonna move over here from OneNote, you gotta go into Evernote first, so make sure that you're gonna get your information. And then Nick's note, uh, synchronize with Evernote, then export the X files. Okay, well, so it sort of imports. It really, other things import into Evernote and then you can put them into Joplin. Now here's, problem and issue. So Joplin can do export. It exports into their JEX, which is a Joplin export file. And that's a tar file that contains lots of notes and notebooks. It has everything there. It's a raw format so that you're going to have to parse this. Like it has your location data. It has everything you want in there, but you're going to have to figure out what to do with it. It's not just giving you like plain markdown files to move somewhere else. So I'm not sure how useful that is. Finally, before we look at the app, let's look at synchronization. Uh, it does Nextcloud, which is again like hosting your own cloud. It does Dropbox, which is cool. I wish it had iCloud. It does not have iCloud. Um, Dropbox means, or with Dropbox updates a number of months back, or maybe even years back now. Like I can't even have like you know a couple dozen notes in Dropbox um, if I have multiple devices eventually, because Dropbox only allows you without paying to sync like two, two unless you're grandfathered in and have it old devices that are authorized when they didn't care. So that uh, can suck. But if you're on your own next cloud, you're just good to go. And it does WebDAV. So here's a bunch of other places that it'll sync with, right? Uh, WebDAV compatible services are Drive HQ, FastMail, HiDrive, Nginx. You can see them all there. And it does OneDrive synchronization. Actually kind of miffed that it does OneDrive and not iCloud. But it doesn't. So it just doesn't have it. Now let's take a look at the Joplin interface just to see what we got here. This is what we're presented with. We have our settings. Where are they? They are down here. Configurize, configurization. Synchronization and configure does not equal whatever I just said before. Um, so we can go into pick UK English. That's pretty good. I'm in Canada, so that'd be like pretty close. Gives me my date format, my time format. Uh, 
Dropbox is the default sync target, but you can come in here and change it to your other options. None of which I really like, to be honest. Uh, what do we do with attachments is in here, how many connections we can make, how often it syncs, uh, whether we encrypt or not. And we have options of themes. We have a light, dark. Where does it show the dark? Because it clearly didn't change the whole thing. I have to save that. Solarized light. Oh yeah, you do have to save. There you go. Solarize dark. Hmm. What else do we have here? Dracula. Well, that's in the fair. You know, Dracula. Let's just go back to this light theme. There we go. Uh, we can change your editor fonts if you want to. I always just leave these things standard because why? Uh, geolocation. So that's interesting. You can actually tell where you took a note. Uh, opt into the editor beta. So it's just a extra stuff. And there's a whole bunch of other like features. So the editor beta looks like it's um, just a fancier editor. Sure, editor beta. Why not? We'll see what that does. Save. Should just save. Why does that? Why do I have to go interact with it and hit save? Should just save. Uh, yeah, you can change how your line breaks work. Lots of other stuff. Math expressions. I don't use that. Fountain syntax support. No idea what that is. Mermaid diagrams. That's a special like mermaid diagrams. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I don't know a lot about it. I've seen it recently though. Uh, a few times how we do footnotes, uh, subtext and super text, uh, def list inserts. Yeah. How long do we keep our note history for? And then just some extra stuff. That's how it works. Well, that's what it is. So here is our, oh, so here's the editor. You don't have to, uh, hit edit. So in the default editor, let's go back and show you that too. In the default editor, where's the editor beta thing? Kill that. Save. So by default, I can't actually edit from here. I have to go up and hit, uh, where was that? Oh, actually, I have to hit down here in the red. That's right. And edit. Now I can edit and we see a markdown file. So like that image that was right here is just gone. Uh, not gone. It's now something I have to um, save to get back to. Uh, yeah, right. We can attach things to it. So I get attach, take photo, attach photo, attach any file. Let's see, browse. So that gives me my file picker and I could choose something in here if I wanted. I don't want to do that. Or I can attach, uh, attach photo select photos. So I'm on the iOS 14 beta. Let's attach a photo of one of my kids because why not? What? Yes. So it asked me to attach twice. That was weird. How do we get back out of this? Command C. Yes. Nope. How do we save? not escape. But this kind of sucks. There we go. That took me back to embed the picture of my yep, family camping is right there. Perfect. That was nice. It should be able to like hit command S and save or escape and it saves like, <sighs> I don't love the interface clearly. Um, but it does support markdown. I always like that always like markdown. Let's go back and check out the editor again. Configuration, editor, save. Okay, that saves super annoying. And now let's see what we do. So now we have, oh, so it's a split screen. See that? I've got my top one. And so I could come up here and say, oh, I typed something earlier as a free something and I can go back in here. And cool. Just jump me straight into the editor, I guess. Where's my split screen now, though? Because I had split screen at the beginning. So it's split screen now, but as soon as I type something, yeah, because I can't do anything here. Three main columns. And as soon as you type anything, 
and just lose it. Command S doesn't work, nothing from escape. This is the navigation, so I assume this will have me um, let me jump back and forth between stuff. But again, I don't I don't like that new editor. I almost prefer the other way. Let's go back again. And command comma does not bring up settings. Uh, now it doesn't do that in lots of iOS apps, but it does that in it's doing that in more and more kind of hearkening back to the Mac. So this is a job one, really. Uh, it lets you take markdown notes. Um, it does some task management. Where is that as well? I think with task management, what it lets you do is, does it have importing and exporting sync tips, privacy? Let's just start a new note. New to do. Okay, new to do. Uh, what do I need to do? Finish job in. Uh, sorry, over on my other screen, I'm not sure you'll see this because I'm using two monitors here. Uh, I'm asking about location. I'm going to say allow once. Joplin screencast. I can come in here and write some information on it. Recording this. Does it support markdown? Down. And I've seen in other spots where it supports like this. Uh, it's a, um, a to-do list as a GitHub markup. Task. And how do we save this again? I have to go back. That does so it supports task. And I can check it off there by tapping. Finish Joplin screencast. So in here, edit. But I can't have like a sub note, it doesn't look like. Yeah, it doesn't look like I can have a sub note. What's this? Is my filter up here? Sort by, yep. Yeah. How do I do want to do it? Perfect. You have a single task on its own. So I guess that means I have to have lots of different tasks. So this could be a project, and then I would come in and make my multiple tasks, right? So I need to record this. Record. It doesn't do auto completion, which sucks. I have to type in each list item. Then I would edit. And then I would um, have a YouTube list. And that includes upload, thumb, stuff like that. And I have a post list to put on my site. That would give me embed. Perfect. Yep, yeah, so it is nested. I like that. I know it supports Markdown already. We've already seen that. Let's see if it supports drag and drop from iOS. Let's go edit this note. I don't necessarily care where it goes, so we'll bring up photos. I'll support split screen, which is great. Let's grab this woohoo mom thing. My wife was running laps around our house yesterday for a running um, challenge, so we got to cheer her on lots. Does not support drag and drop, which sucks. Does it support it from files? That's interesting. I'm gonna guess it does not. Let's jump in my inbox and see what I got here. This is actually a markdown file. Will it import the markdown file? Here you go. Actually brought in the text from that markdown file. That's cool. Does it take in images? Where's an image for me? No plan two should have some compressed image. Does not. So it's going to drag and drop sometimes, but not all times. That sucks. But yeah, I wonder if it'll take and drag and drop that entire note. If I bring in, this is a big note. Nope. But can I start a new one? New note. And just bring it in. Well, there you go. Note plan two. So that's cool. That brought in my note plan two script uh, for a video that is already published. Coming up as we're just recording, but already published. So what do I think about Joplin overall? It's interesting. I I like that it has a terminal application. I like that it's available everywhere. I it's got some some interesting features. Uh, I like that it's open source, but ultimately I don't think it's a stellar. I don't think it's it's not an app that's going to pull me away from anything. It doesn't tempt me really at all from Devonthink, um, which I use as my inbox. 
to like collect everything. And then I, if I have thoughts on it, it gets moved over to Obsidian. I'm not tempted in any fashion to drop either of those applications. The Joplin's interesting. It seems nice enough, but it's not tempting me away. If you liked the video, you can give me a thumbs up below. If you loved it, you can subscribe, then hit the bell and YouTube lets you know about the videos that are coming up. And if you really, really loved it, you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale, where you can support the channel. Have a good day.